Welcome to XC597, Circuit Simulation and Modeling. Um, in this video, we will continue our presentation of modified nodal analysis, and we will present the stamps of capacitors and inductors. So, as usual, let me start by stating the learning outcomes. You'll be able to, after this video, develop uh, a stamp for capacitors, develop a stamp for inductors, and so far, I've been saying modified nodal analysis without justifying, you know, why I'm using modified. So we will be able to see the difference between the standard nodal analysis and modified nodal analysis. Um, and of course, you will now be able to design a program that automatically constructs the MNA equations, the modified nodal analysis equations for circuits containing inductors and capacitors. Okay. So as usual, we're going to start with an example. And so we have an example here with a capacitor in it. So let's let's write Kirchhoff's current's law at every node. Right, so we're going to write KCL at node 1. Right, so this would be we're summing the currents leaving the node. So that's the current leaving through resistor G1. So that's G1 V1. So that's the current in this resistor over here. The current leaving node 1 through res resistor G3 is G3 V1 minus V2. And the current leaving node 1 through the capacitor is C multiplied by the voltage across the capacitor over its derivative, so that's V1 dot minus V2 dot. On the right-hand side, we put the currents uh, entering the node right through the independent sources, so that would be uh, this G of T over here. Okay, so this is my KCL at node 1. KCL at node 2 is the resist the current in resistor G2, which is G2V2, the current in resistor G3, which is G3V2 minus V1, and the current in the capacitor, which is C V2 dot minus V1 dot. Okay. So we have two unknowns, two equations, we are done. And we can write now these equations in matrix format. So we can rearrange the terms and <coughs> write them in matrix format. And basically what you end up with is the MNA equations of this circuit, right? So this would be the G matrix, and this would be here my unknown vector X of T. This is its derivative, and this is the C matrix. So we can now you know, you probably have guessed what the capacitor stamp is going to look like. But first, let's look at the, I guess, as an example, look at the resistor stamp. All right. So here on my hand, sorry, on my right hand side here, we have the, the B, the B vector. Okay. So the resistor stamp is um, G, so G3 minus G3 minus G3. This is the stamp for resistor G3, right? So this is, if we look at resistor G3, it appears in the G matrix, right? So this we've seen this before when we were presenting the resistor stamp. So this is consistent with, with what we're expecting, the impact of the resistor to be on the MNA equation. Okay, so capacitor C now is connected also between node 1 and node 2, right? So it appears in a similar way in row 1, row 2, column 1, column 2, just like G3 except that it appears in the C matrix because it multiplies the derivatives of the voltages. <laughs> so really, we expect the capacitor stamp, and you know this example sort of demonstrates that, to have the same form as the resistor stamp, except that it appears in the C matrix. Right? So my capacitor, if I have a capacitor between node i and node j, would have a stamp of C minus C minus C, C in row I, row J, column I, column J, but it appears in the C matrix. And 
if the capacitor is connected to ground, so we have node I on one side and ground on the other, then it appears on the diagonal row I column I. And in both cases, right, it appears in the C matrix. Okay. So that's my stamp for the capacitor. It's not you know, surprising that it looks very similar to the stamp of, of the resistor, except that it's in the C matrix. Okay. Now, uh, let's take a look at the stamp for inductors. Okay, so let's look at this very simple RLC circuit. And if I would like to do nodal analysis here, right, I write KCL at node V or at node 1, I guess there's only one node in this case, and we end up with this equation the current in the resistor, GV, the current in the capacitor, CV dot, and the current in the inductor, right? And on the right-hand side, we have the independent source. So my problem here is that I have an integral, right? So you end up with an integral differential equation, and this causes us problems for all kinds of reasons. Let's illustrate one of them. This is a a linear circuit, so I can write this equation in the Laplace domain. And you can see here, so the derivative becomes a multiplication by s, integral is 1 over s, and you can see here when, let's say, if you're doing DC analysis and you want s to be 0, we're going to have a problem here, <clears throat> right? So, um, this approach is not going to work for inductors. Okay, so what are we going to do in the case of inductors? Okay, so maybe we can go back and take a look at the elements we have done so far, which are the resistor and the capacitor. So in the case of a resistor, right, we can express it in terms of conductance, I is equal to GV, or V is equal to IR, Ohm's law, right? So, so this is my Ohm's law here, you can express it in terms of conductance or resistance. And we chose the first case because we are writing Kirchhoff's current law, right? We're writing the nodal equations and we're summing currents, right? So it may, it's convenient to use this form uh, to sum the current. So we add GV, right? So we used this model for the resistor. And in the case of the capacitor, again, we have, we can write the current as a function of the voltage, C V, v dot really. And, or we can write the voltage as an integral of the current, right? But we chose this one for KCL, it makes sense. And it happens to give us a derivative, so we end up with a differential equation, and that was not a problem. Now, in the case of inductors, right, if, we, if we're writing KCL, we're going to end up with this integral, as we saw before, right? But for inductors, we also have we can write V is LDI by DT, right? So this also is a model for our inductor. Uh, so in this case, the advantage is we have a derivative, right? But it's not as straightforward to apply KCL as we did before, right? So we're actually going to use this approach for the inductors. Let's see how we can do it. And as usual, we're going to uh, use an example to illustrate. So let's take a look at this circuit. And um, so we have here a, an inductor and a capacitor in our circuit. We have two nodes. And we're going to write KCL on each node, right? Except that I don't want to use integrals. So what we will do is we're going to define a new variable, which is the current in the inductor. Right, so now that I have this IL, my inductor current, I can very easily write KCL at node 1. Right, so that's the current in the resistor, <coughs> G1V1, plus the current in the inductor, that's just IL. Right, this might have a new variable, is equal to J of T, which is my right-hand side uh, independent source. Okay, and KCL at node 2, you write the current in... G2, that's G2V2, plus CV2 dot, this is my current in the capacitor, 
and I have now to add the current in the inductor, which would be minus IL. So I have now my KCL equations. The difficulty here is that I have two equations, but three unknowns, V1, V2, and IL. So I need an additional equation, and that's just my inductor model, which tells me that V1 minus V2, the voltage across the inductor, is equal to L dI by dt, or derivative of the inductor. So I can write it V1 minus V2 minus L I L dot is equal to zero. So this is my inductor model. So now I have three equations with three unknowns. Right? And we can take these equations and write them in matrix format. Right? So you can see here the resistor stamp for the first resistor, the resistor stamp for the second resistor. This is my capacitor stamp, right? C on the diagonal. Right? And in red, we have the contribution of my inductor. Right? So we had to, in this case, add a new column because we have a new variable. And we had to add a new row because we have the equation for the model, which we have to add. Right? So my contribution for the staff for the inductor, we have to add a plus one and minus one here. Remember these two rows, row one and row two are KCL at node one and node two. So all we're doing here is we're adding IL and subtracting IL in my KCL equations. And here we have plus one and minus one, which is basically V1 minus V2. And we have minus L here. So this is my model for the inductor, right? V1 minus V2 minus L I dot is equal to zero. This is my third equation over here. So the inductor stamp appears actually in both the G matrix and the C matrix. Okay. And in this case, we no longer have just nodal equations. We have the KCL equations, of course, but we also have the model equations. And our variables are not just the nodal variables, we also have the inductor currents. Right, so this is where modified comes from. Modified nodal analysis is when we use this formulation to deal with inductors and, as we will see later, voltage sources. Okay. So, um, so this is my stamp for the inductor and we can now generalize it. If you have an inductor between node i and node j, right, you have to add a new variable, the inductor current, which means we need a new column. We have to add a new equation, which is the inductor model, which means we have a new row. And the stamp would be plus one minus one in the new column, row i, row j, and plus one minus one in the new row, column i, column j. And we have minus L in the C matrix, right? On the diagonal, new row, new column. So, this is my stamp for an inductor. And if the inductor happens to be connected to ground, then, well, we still need a new column and a new row, except that now I have only one KCL equation, right, at node i. So we have row i here uh, is plus one, and that's it. There is no minus one for the other one. And uh, I have only one variable here, vi, so it's just vi is equal to L di by dt. It is my equation here. So um, the stamp is simpler if the inductor has one grounded node. Okay, so um, to summarize then, what we did today is we developed a stamp for capacitors, a stamp for inductors. We've seen how that, because of the inductors, now we are doing modified neural analysis as opposed to simple standard nodal analysis and hopefully after today's or this this video you'll be able to add the capability in your program to handle inductors and capacitors and construct automatically the MNA equations of circuits containing inductors and capacitors.